Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Andrew, Caleb, and making her second appearance on the episode is Opal. And we're coming to you through the power of the internet from the Chills, Cards, and Collectible Game Room. I hope everybody's had a fantastic Friday, continues to have an awesome Friday night. So, this tonight, tonight's the night, guys. Tonight's the first night we move from Legion's Realms at War, trading card game that we've been covering for three months, and we enter New Realms. And by New Realms, I mean we're going to be talking about a new game currently in development. It's a trading card game, obviously, um, and you guys know nothing about this game. I, I told you guys the name of it. <clears throat> I think that's about all I did, um, but you guys haven't even seen any of the cards. You don't really know the mechanics of the game or anything like that, correct? Mm -hmm. So this is all going to be new to you guys, and that's why it's great to have you here. Um, one, it's always great to have friends doing this stuff with me, but uh, it's great because we get kind of like honest feedback and first like, okay, this is kind of cool or not cool, whatever you guys' opinion of it is. And of course, uh, me and Caleb, uh, we always do these videos mostly together unless he has something going on, but um, Opal's kind of here and there every once in a while, but it's always great, we say, to have a female's perspective on games because there's such a low percentage of female players, 38% as female players, and we've kind of discussed why we think that is. Uh, but um, it's always good to have a female's perspective because I know when it comes to TCGs, you get like a lot of these games that have like uh, cars that are more geared towards men. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, super sexy outfits and cleavage and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and I can see <laughs> that that could bother some females and other females don't really care. But um, <clears throat> I can definitely see why these games are geared more towards men. More towards men. But tonight we're going to be talking about Flight Breed. And Blight Breed, I have some notes for the first time ever because I could not remember all the <laughs> stuff. You. Look at me go. So, um, so yeah, Blight Breed. So um, I have talked to the creator of Blight Breed. His name is Jesse. Uh, seems like a super super cool dude. Um, he gave us permission to uh, to talk about his game tonight, um, and then I've had some conversations in. Uh, uh, DMs on Discord stuff, and uh, he's super excited about the game. He seems like he's put a lot of work and effort into it. Um, I believe their Kickstarter should be popping off here in the next couple months, which I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to offer with their Kickstarter. Because um, another game that I was going to originally review is an NFT, which is you know a phone application or PC based game, but I've decided to hold off on that for some reasons. We'll talk about offline, but. So Blight Breed was kind of the game that kind of interested me and, and interested me for a couple reasons. Does that have werewolves? <laughs> so it interested me for a couple reasons. Uh, reason one is it plays kind of similar to our favorite TCG at the moment, which is Legion. Legion. It, it, it plays okay. somewhat similar to that. Okay. All right. um, mixed with maybe a little bit of Pokemon play style. Okay. But um, you asked me the question, uh, Yes, it has werewolves. <laughs> kind of. So, Blightbreed, let me give you the... Um, Blightbreed TCG is based on human-animal hybrids with extensive amounts of lore, gorgeous art, and intriguing character and personalities. Blightbreed was originally a vast story, vast story the creator was writing when they eventually implemented it into a trading card game. The game itself has been in development for over six months and has been completely funded by the creator himself before creating Kick Kickstarter. So, we also know, see, and there's a lot of similarities because we know Legion's Realms at War also started off as a story. Mm -hmm. Taylor Howe told us that's how he started his game and, and eventually just decided to turn it into a trading card game. Mm -hmm. um, the origin story for Blightbreed uh, in the year 20, uh, 2062, an event of unknown origins plagued the planet. 
Human and animal DNA began to fuse with one another, creating hybrids of humans and animals. Uh, the even was speculated to have been caused by a virus, which has become known as the Helix virus. So when I was reading this, um, it kind of had me, uh, kind of had me um, chuckle a little bit because uh, I don't know. Oh, there we go. I, I see. I'm trying to get used to all this stuff. It had me kind of chuckling a little bit because uh, um, uh, it reminded me of. You guys ever seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the newer one, mm -hmm. yes. when Baxter Stockman's talking to April O'Neil and he's like, you know, there's some type of animal DNA inside of all of us, yeah. and then when you know Bebop and Rocksteady transform, they turn into the rhinoceros yeah. and the warthog, right? <laughs> and it kind of, kind of reminded me of that, you know, like these virus, this this uh, helix virus is kind of attached to humans. And I, I'm kind of curious of how the transformations happen. Is there, is he saying there's animal DNA in us? Is that what the game's telling us? Or do the humans come in contact with animals and that's how they turn into these hybrids? Mm. Um, but who cares at the end of the day? Because it looks like it has werewolves. And you guys know me. I'm a huge cryptoid fan. Uh, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Jersey Devil, things like that. I'm always stoked and excited about, even though I don't believe in any of that stuff. And I just love reading the lore on it. And werewolves, you guys know, my number one. So, what do you guys think of that? What, like, We'll just start with that. What do you guys think of the story behind it? It's a very short lore. He had a lot of lore. He deleted off their Discord because he wanted to rewrite some of it. Um, and I, I think some comic books are actually in the making right now. So, uh, what do you guys think about that? Like, <clears throat> is it something TCG-wise that you guys think, okay, that's kind of a cool idea? Do you guys think it's an original idea? Do you think it's been done before? Do you think werewolves are played out or these hybrids stuff is played out when it comes to TCGs? What, what's your guys' opinions? I look at it, so from the uh, perspective of it possibly coming out of a comic book, do you remember Probably not, but do you, you ever hear the books like called Animars? Yes, mm -hmm. I have yeah. them all. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Like, yeah. you know, like there's all these kids, there's all these people out there that have this ability to like turn into whatever animal they like they desire or whatever is like in their genetic, in their genome. Mm -hmm. You know? So. I think it's kind of cool. Like, I think it's kind of following the same thing. I would be very intrigued um, and interested in the fact that they're coming out with a comic book and to like see how it reads. Mm -hmm. um, so, with this TCG, um, there's what are known as clans, right? Uh, which we've seen in past games, Vanguard has clans, correct? Um, well, they're you know, nations now, but they used to be clans. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of categories of right. the nations as clans. And there's a lot of TCGs that have clans or factions yeah. and stuff like that. So this one actually has one, two, three, four, five, six fact factions or clans. You got Charles, the Wolf Clan. You got Matthias, the Tiger Clan, Jules, Fox Clan, Ooh, uh, Fox. Diedrich, the Bear Clan, Valerie, the Panther Clan, and a Mystery Hybrid Clan. Which, I will be honest, Jesse, the creator, did kind of divulge a little bit more information to me, but uh, it's not anything that I can share uh, because it's going to be, you know, when the game comes out, uh, new rarities and stuff like that that he kind of did discuss with me off, off uh, through DMs. So uh, it, was, it was really cool to get that information. I didn't really ask for it. He just kind of gave it to me and because, um, you know, he's excited about us doing some content on the game and get some more eyes on it. So um, I do know a little bit more. Uh, but. Uh, so, <clears throat> let's see what I got here. Uh, so we have card rarities. Um, on the top left corner of the card, uh, which I think we can look at some of the artwork. You guys want to see some of the artwork? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so this is one of my favorite pieces of art. Uh, it reminds us of, of Harley. course, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn makes it a little bit of Baby Doom from another game we know. Yeah. They, uh, this hybrid holding this knife for this teddy bear, I uh, just think it's it's sick, man. I love that kind of dark, morbid art like that. It's kind of cool. And then we got, uh, this is, I'm assuming it's going to probably be, um, is that... Uh, she looks like a fox. Jules. Um, <laughs> which, if I remember right, she's kind of a manipulator. Uh, when I was reading over some of the stuff, she's kind of a manipulator, which I, I was like, okay, if it's a manipulation kind of thing that she can do, it's, it's going to be kind of like 
a deck where she can maybe manipulate the opponent's deck and maybe steal their warriors and do her bidding for a hand or two or maybe permanently. I don't know if that's what it is. I didn't go into that much depth, but I think that would be really cool because it's always fun to get those factions, those decks that can steal other people's cards or use them against them. So. Well, it could be possible. I mean, foxes and lore, a lot of lore, are very shifty and they're, they're manipulative anyways. Especially yeah. if you do go off of like a Japanese lore, mm -hmm. the fox demons always tricked their prey into becoming slaves or meals or whatever they needed. Yeah. So, huh? that'd be cool. Good golly, lady. Yeah. <laughs> You've been reading over there. Uh, uh, then we got <laughs> this one's pretty cool. I'm assuming this must be a, Looks like a tiger. tiger? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty cool. I just Would love it the be art. A man. Tiger or tigress? Tigress. Yes, tigress. Tigress. It is. Actually, I don't think it is because don't they don't have a shirt on. No, that I it has tell. a bandage wrap though. So I'm not. Most bandage wraps around the chest are females. I'm not sure. Well, if that is, it goes all the way down, and that's a male. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wish I knew more, but I don't. That's just that's why, that's my a, that's artistic... A, that's the price you pay when you start reviewing it. TCG and development. You don't yeah, like, know wait, much about it. I think it is a female. I think you're right, though. I think it would be a tigress. And then... That's pretty cool. That one's pretty dope. I like the bow staff. Uh, that's a fox. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, which must be Jules, maybe, or maybe it's one of the warriors for that clan, I'm not really sure. Um, and this is the card. I know that I can bring it up over here, guys, because I know that you can see it very well. We're all like this. <laughs> so, this is actually the card. We're looking at it on our screen a little bit better. Um, you know, you have your rarity symbol, which is going to be in the top right at the corner right above the name. Um, it's hard because I don't have any physical copies of the cards. I wish I did to show them a little bit better, but when I have to pull images from online from their site, because um, it's not even a website, I got this off their uh, their original Kickstarter that they had kicked off. Um, so, you know, when you pull the images, it kind of really damages the uh, the uh, the layout of it. So, yeah, it's really, the pixels get really wrong. Really sensing like a uh, Street Fighter like. So oh, we're yeah. gonna so we're gonna talk dude. about that, dude. We're yeah. gonna kind of talk about that a little bit. And this is the arena. Now that you say something, this is the this is pretty much what your play map would basically look like. So your combat zone, by what I understand, if I understood what Jesse was saying, this is where your um, clan leader will go as long as as well as with your warriors. So it, it, it essentially it plays like Leaves of Rounds of War. Your clan leader is just that. It's your warlord, essentially. Your warriors protect it from taking damage. Once the clan leader mm -hmm. reaches zero, the game's over. So your warriors are essentially doing like an allegiance does, protecting the uh, clan leader. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming maybe, I don't know how they stack in that combat zone. Um, I think it would have been cooler for me personally if your uh, clan leader was separate from your warriors, like maybe uh, next to the combat zone, you had your clan leader zone, and next to it was your combat zone to place your warriors, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you can only summon one warrior per time or what. Um, you got your hybrid podium, and you have what's called vials, which I'm assuming are kind of like spells yeah. or trap cards or something. Or buffs. Or buffs, yeah, Probably something like, like that. Um, uh, then you got your main deck, and then of course your defeated uh, um, side. So, um, interesting layout. I'm not so sure how I feel about that. What are you? What's your guys's opinion? First off, what's your guys's opinion on the um, artwork? From what? From I what? Saw, it, it is, this is this is this is okay. Really this is, cool, this is this is. This is our time to be honest because this is a new TCG in development, and if there's negative feedback or positive feedback, this is good for the creator Jesse to know and his team to know. Because I mean, I know our three opinions might not matter, but if they keep getting certain feedback and it's similar, then it kind of makes them kind of yeah. take a step back and revamp and, and try to decide. So, what do you guys think about that? Now, I can probably say that a lot of these cards, like I'll show you, like an actual card that won't pull up, but this is what the actual card will look like. But I didn't really want to share too much of that um because you know uh, that it's going to be on our kickstarter stuff and yeah. i'm not sure i can share these 
Um, but this is what the actual card would look like. What I showed you was kind of just, I think, um, art style to get to this point. Yeah. Right, a rough um, draft and of it. Yeah, too. kind of like a rough draft. Yeah. I personally, pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of cartoon art. Um, um, I was just about to say that. It's not like, really my thing. Um, I know it's 100% your thing because she's a huge, a huge anime, anime fan. fan. <laughs> I mean, I like anime. Um, I'm just, when I play TCG, I'm not a super massive fan of cartoon art. It's why I don't play Pokemon. Uh, it's why I have a hard time playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's mm -hmm. just I'm not a fan of cartoon art. Um, I get it that all TCGs are in a way, shape, or form cartoon art. Uh, but I'm talking about like the super animated, cartoony looking yeah. stuff, like where it looks street, like a, Street Fighter. Uh, yeah, Street Fighter, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtle uh, card or something like that. Now, I'm not saying I'm not taking anything away from the game. I still love the art. Now, it's but just if it's if it goes with what you just showed us mm -hmm. versus what the audience is seeing, I can live with it a little bit more. Yeah, because it doesn't when it's, it's when it's on it's the actual cards, it's not as cartoony. And then me and Opal, I can't I can't bring him up on here, um, but we saw a couple of playmat ideas, and we kind of had the same. We looked at yeah. a couple of different playmats, and we were like, uh, okay, one thing looks really good, but the other thing looks kind of out of place. But this is all I'm thinking. This is not all finalized things. No, it's I think in it's more concept design. Right. It's, it, from just from my artist point of view, it, it's just getting a a rough draft. Once you get the rough draft going, you think it looks really nice, then you blend it all together and make it actually look good. Yeah. Honestly, I like I personally love the artwork. Yeah. But I also it's... like living in my fantasy realm yeah. Yeah. and not wanting you, to be you, it more realistic. Because you, you've told us before with, with Legion's Realms of War and you've talked to that creator, you've told us, you know, the reason why you personally play TCGs is to get out of that that, that reality that we're in, yeah. you know, that day-to-day. -day. Like, when you yeah. play a game, you're playing it to escape reality and you're emerged into that fantasy world. <laughs> kind of like when we play Dungeons and Dragons. I, I will be honest, when we play oh, Dungeons and Dragons or games like that, it's the same way for me. Yeah. I, I block out everything around me and I get immersed in that fantasy world because you have to visually be in that fantasy world to play a oh, game yeah. like that. And I think that's with a lot of TCGs. Um, I agree with you to an extent that the, the super cartoony stuff we just saw, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that that's more than likely not going to be what's on yeah. the actual playable physical cards mm -hmm. uh, because I think that would steer me away from even though it was like werewolf hybrid stuff because you know any game that's got a werewolf I'm I'm down to play um, but and maybe that's concepts for their comic book too exactly exactly you know, like you know because like you're not going to have the same art in a comic book that you're going to have in mm -hmm. a TCG and, and you, you know? guys will be able to see all this stuff um, I can't put it on this because I don't have the rights or permission for some of this stuff for some of this artwork but I will put links in the YouTube video to where you can go check out their links and mm -hmm. then you can physically the viewer can then go and physically see more of the artwork in person and yeah. what some of the booster sets and the the booster packs are gonna have so you guys asked what is the goal of Blightbreed right you guys said it had like the is it like Street Fighter or whatever? So the aim of Blightbreed is to protect the clan leader from being destroyed. If your clan leader is destroyed, you lose the game. However, the clan leader cannot be directly attacked if there are other hybrids in the arena, unless otherwise specified with a card or card effect, which we're very similar with, right? Mm -hmm. Adrenaline and vials also play a crucial role in Blightbreed. Vials are used to be able to play your standard hybrids into the arena. To use an attack special ability or to use an adrenaline card. Adrenalines are important and crucial to the game. Adrenalines create a certain condition or effect that greatly assists your hybrids. Blightbreed did do collaboration. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Otherverse. It was formerly known as Otherworld. Uh, they did a collaboration with them and was their uh, Charles card, which Charles, when I read the, the backstory of Charles, he's this half wolf, half human hybrid. And he was a lawyer in a former life and super calculative and very smart and things like that. Like, I don't want to give away, like, all the lore. I want you guys to be able to go to these links when I post them and be able to read the lore for yourself because it's always, like, I'm not a narrator and I might ruin the lore for you uh, because I'm not the uh, world's best narrator, like I said. But, um, yeah, w so what do you guys think of that? Like, what do you think... 
just that brief discussion about it, what do you think that maybe it's missing or do you think it's missing anything? See, just off of that, I don't know if I could judge that. Yeah. Because just judging, uh, so reading something and playing something are two different things. Exactly. And you I, can read it all day long right. and not fully understand it unless you're just one of those people that are like, oh yeah, I exactly. got it. And you, and but it's, it's, I have to play. And it's funny you say that because I asked Jesse today before I started, before we did the uh, this, this video, I was like, hey, is there oh. any play video anywhere? And he's like, no, not yet because it's still currently in development, which yeah. kind of sucks because one, when you do videos like this and you want to show off a new TCG that kind of grasp your attention you want to have physical cards because you want to be able to show them yeah. to the viewers and show them what they actually look like you want to have some gameplay video so that you can kind of get an idea how to play it and we talked about that before like our big gripe with titan tcg um is when you go to like their kickstarter or whatever and i hope that blight breed takes this into consideration when they start their new kickstarter in a couple months it's imperative that you have gameplay video. Yeah. It's very imperative on, on these Kickstarter stuff because if you don't have that and you just have what it is, it's not going to catch my attention. I have to physically see how a game plays or physically play it, and that was our big gripe with Titan. They had nothing. They had no walkthrough guide or any example of how to play the game. So I'm hoping when Blightbreed gets to that point where they actually officially start their Kickstarter that they have something for that for us Especially people that are going to pledge that Kickstarter, they have something informative to let them know how the game right. exactly plays out. Because, like you said, I can read this all day, but I still don't know how adrenalines are played. I don't know if they're like trap cards. I don't know. They're buffers, apparently, by what we read. They assist your hybrid, make them stronger, or whatever. Like or how the arena. Stuff, yeah. What or the how, effects of those cards are. Or how or the, the arena, arena plays. Or yeah. how like, the arena actually plays, and how your warriors attack, and, and things like that. It right. just. It's very imperative that when they do these Kickstarters, these games do these Kickstarters, that we get some kind of informative video of how it plays. Yeah. Now, I will give you... It doesn't the, have I, to be all of it, just something. I will give the their, the, the original Kickstarter they originally launched um, before they go to launch their uh, actual official Kickstarter. Um, it has a lot of really good information if you want to see the cards, if you want to see... Like what the booster packs offer and stuff like that. They like that information for Blight Breed is out the window. Like it, it made Titan look like second class, man, because it just had a lot of information. It's just missing that playthrough yeah. video right. to see how it, how it, how the flow of the game works. Because that's our big thing. We like we like games that aren't one. The reason why you and me um, have talked about flesh and blood, or maybe even you, is just, especially if you're playing a game of Blitz, it's so fast. It's yeah. over in like five to ten minutes. Yeah. I like games that last. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hate games like, even like with Magic, where it's like, okay, here comes Marcelo, what we talk about all the time, that red deck and the game's over. Yeah. I like <laughs> games that are fun and last a while, and you can communicate with your opponent you can talk a little trash you can have a little bit of fun and it just opens up dialogue yeah. and conversation and that's that's why we've all liked legion so much and and i'm hoping that maybe their gameplay is kind of the same and i, I hate to bring up legions all the time but it's kind of what we base all our yeah. tcgs that we play it's what we base them on we right. compare them to and everybody's going to do it if you're a magic fan you're going to compare Blight breed to magic. Yep. If you're a flesh and blood fan, you're going to compare Blight breed to flesh and blood, and we're no different. Nope. Legion's Realms at War is our favorite TCG right now, so when we pick up a new one, we're always going to compare it to that because it's more our play style. Yeah. I do like the idea. It does seem similar in, 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 in various ways, like attacking the clan leader and the warriors protecting it, which is in, which is interesting. I like the fact that it was a story, which means, you know, there's... A sex, excessive amount of lore, yeah. which I'm a huge lore fan. I know Caleb, he could give a crap less about lore. He just wants to start what? smashing <laughs> some card games and, and start battling. Like he, He's like, I don't care about the backgrounds of this no, stuff. I just I want to make story. strong decks and fight. So, I mean, it's, it's it, things are, it's, then that's the thing, beauty about TCGs. Like, you are a visual person. You love, and you're, you're an artist. You went to art school. You, you, mm -hmm. you. You love art, so you always, like, when a game captivates you, it's the art. Yeah, that's going to catch my attention first. Right. And then it's going to be the lore, and then it's going to be me, gameplay. It's, <laughs> it, and for me, I'm captivated by lore. 
Yeah. And then Caleb's captivated by gameplay and yep. structure yeah. and mechanics. And everybody's and different. That's, that's okay. Yeah. And and <clears throat> yeah, it's I I I am gonna be very honest. I'm I'm pretty excited for this game. Um, like I said, I wasn't a, when I first looked at. It, I was I was on point with Caleb. I hated the cartooning art. It's just not for me. But when we look at the actual physical, what the yeah. cards are gonna look like, it's 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 okay. completely different. I do have a question though. Sure. So you guys are saying that you don't like that cartoony, but again, reverting back to uh, Legions, their first editions is cartoony. Right. So and, what is and, the difference and between I really, that and, and to be and honest, this? And to be honest, I'm not a fan of some of the first edition no. art cards oh, in Legions. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not a cartoony art kind of person, no. and so. And you can watch some videos of other people talking about that, and that was their problem with Legion State. They, they kind of didn't want to get into the game because they saw that cartoony art, and it was yeah. kind of a red, they were like, oh, that's not for me. But then when they actually saw what the cards looked like and the reprints looked like, and that's what I'm saying, yeah. this is a new game. What, what we see is not what it's probably always going to be. They're going to revamp it, they're going to edit it, and, and it's... The finalized products is going to look so much different. Yeah, you know, of and, and like go back to um, the knife and the teddy bear. <laughs> oh boy, let me see if I can go <laughs> back to that one. See if I can hit this one. No. Nope. All right. One. So there's a big difference. Like that's that dark, like real life art mm -hmm. in that one. Sure. But then you jump ahead to like go to the the f that like that. See, yeah. I don't know. I think that's more the shadow. Playing tricks on you. Well, you because can definitely you tell there's an the arena. Shadow, you can definitely tell she's fighting an arena. You can right. see like yeah. the cameras or flashes or whatever behind them. I'm, right. I'm talking about the fox as a whole. Sure. That is very, very. That is very vivid, cartoony. Right. Like I feel like that should be in a comic um, book. In a comic book. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or a video game. Okay. So. Definitely. Again, it's and a then, trick of the eye. <laughs> and then, but it's but it's not. It looks like a video game. It yeah. looks like that something. That looks like a video game. So did the other one. Which one? That the, one does. The fox in the arena. Yeah, the fox in the arena. That looks like something that you would see right before you got knocked out on Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Like yeah, you know. but so so for you, you're like me, not a fan of that kind of art. No. But when we look at that, we look that, at that. finalized product yes. of what it's probably going to be. Yeah. I'm a pretty big fan of that one. I mean, that's still cartoony. That one is, but, but when you look at some of these other ones, I wish you guys could see these, but I just don't have rights to them. Uh, I mean, it is still a cartoon. It's more okay. So that's what we see. Up so there the Valerie like cartoon. So the Valerie looks really, really good. Um, I, I did have an issue with one thing, and you guys already know what's going to be. The you color line? Exactly. <laughs> so when I when I go into any game, it's it's the first thing I look at is the colors um, because my eyes don't see what you guys see, and so if there's games that are based solely all on color, I'm unable to play them. Yeah. Which was one of my things that I brought up to Jesse. But Jesse seems like a pretty smart person. He said they already had things in place to fix that where they was going to be numbered. Oh, okay. As well with the colors for people that are colorblind. Um, and that's why, again, I talk about games like Magic and, and Legions. Is that I play those games because they're not based on colors. Uh, they're, they are, to an alone. extent. Alo but not alone. Yeah. There's, there's emblems and there's symbols that help me to play the games. And that's why I'm able to play those games. It's right. very sad as a trading card game player and a board game player... That I'm hindered to play a lot of these games due to the cover. Like we played um, Ticket to Ride, Ticket to Ride with Zach and a couple other people at work, you were not and fun with I couldn't have fun with it because mm -hmm. the whole game's based on colors. Yeah. And it's just I had to help them assist me the whole time. I'm like Which this is we knew where you were going. So then they would know what I was doing, and I was like, this game I can't play because it's all so based on colors that mm -hmm. if I have to constantly ask somebody for help. It's going to hinder me to be able to win, and I'm never going to win because yeah. everybody knows what I'm going to do. Right. So I can't. It it sucks as a as a, a huge fan of tabletop games that I'm hindered from playing quite a few of them uh, because of the color issues. But um, yeah, 
If, if the finalized cards look the way we see them yeah. on this side, I'm 100 percent down. Um, I would, I would back a Kickstarter for it uh, because I see potential in the game. I like the fact that it's driven by a story, which tells, like I said, tells me there's gonna be a lot of lore, which is my thing. Yeah. Um, and then we have to remember certain things with TCGs. Uh, especially, and this is for everybody, when we first look at them, we we always look at them in a negative light, in a way. Um, mm -hmm. We did the same thing with Legions. What do you mean? I, I went and got it because, okay, I said, okay, the artwork's cool. Kinda. Yeah. I didn't like the cartoony stuff. I went and got it. Me and Caleb played the game. We didn't really enjoy the first few no. games. Uh, but it was because we were still trying to figure out how to play. And then I think yeah. Blight Breed's going to be that way, for me personally. Sure, I don't understand exactly the goal of Blight Breed. I get the goal of it. We're trying to destroy the word. I just don't know the exact mechanics of it. And I think that maybe if the mechanics are something that can sell me, and the mechanics are fluid and, you know, just I can keep doing things and it's not, like, super repetitive, mm -hmm. like some games are yeah. um i think it's something i could definitely 100 percent get into i think i sometimes you can overlook art mm -hmm. for gameplay yeah which is how we did with legions because those starter decks had the cartoony art so we had to kind of I overlook like that cartoony <laughs> art and just really focus on the actual gameplay and yeah. like i said i hate to keep bringing up legions uh, I think we've done our due diligence with Legions for three months, but it's, like I said, we're always going to compare everything we talk about to that game. Yeah. Because, boy, next week, or, yeah, next Monday, do I got a doozy of a game for you guys, and I'm already going to tell you right now, uh, Bite Breed, I'm, I'm Mike right here. Uh, it depends on how the Kickstarter goes. It depends on if we get, like, a, 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 a video of gameplay and I can see how mm -hmm. it actually plays. Um, if, if they did that stuff, I, I, I would probably pledge them and probably pick up the game and, and, and do more reviews on it if we had physical copies of cards yeah. and yeah. things like that. But boy, the game I got for you guys next week, I, I tell you right now, I would give it like, if I had extra thumbs, I'd give it like, if I had extra hands, I'd give it more thumbs down, man. Is that it, bad? Oh, it's uh -oh. bad. It's just a game that just blows my mind that even somebody was like, yeah, that's a game that we're going to back and uh, start making it. It's, it's going to blow you guys' mind. I'm not going to tell you what? at all what it is. Um, if you want to come over Monday when we do video, you're more than welcome to come over. But, as long as you guys uh, help me. It is, a, it is just a game that I'm just not um, super duper excited about. So, But yeah, um, I'm not sure if Jesse was able to make it here. We haven't really been even watching. Oh, they're out there. <laughs> we haven't even been able to watch the... Uh, the, the comments. I know he said he'd probably be sleeping because that was another problem with some of the people. They weren't sure where the game was being developed from because when you went to their original Kickstarter, mm -hmm. it kind of just got them off the ground to start the development phase to actually start a Kickstarter to back the game and release it. Right. Um, it's in, uh, I don't know how to even pronounce the currency, U A Y A U N. You know, it's, uh, it's a. A Euro? No, no, it's no, no, uh, a. I think e it's a e Chinese. Big Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I oh don't wait, know. Chinese? No, uh, I don't know. Chinese. Chinese it's, 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 or is Japanese again? It's an it's a, it's Chinese an Eastern Indian. currency. Um, so a lot of, well, I really really got you guys thinking over there. It's an Eastern currency. Uh, China or Japan or like some EAU? kind of. Like I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, anyhow, anywho, uh, <laughs> it's people were confused because uh, the Kickstarter was in that currency. Yeah. Uh, so people are like, so where is, where is this game made at? So when I talked to Jesse, he kind of explained it uh, because there's a lot of shortages with TCGs being developed right now with being able to get, you know, whatever goes behind the scenes. We don't know. We're not yeah. TCG yeah. creators. There's shortages for things, so he's kind of getting things developed from different places. Right. I know that he they even talked about, which I thought was really cool, um, biodegradable paper for the cards. Um but it really just... Like the packaging? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Which is pretty cool, because, yeah. you know, environment's pretty important, but uh, he said it really all just depended on, too, if that was something that the company that they wanted to do the packaging could, could actually do or not. Right. So, and that was on their, their, their Kickstarter page that they had. So, um, yeah, so, uh, just... That opinion. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. You guys heard mine. I, I'm down to back the game. I would definitely... 
if there was physical cards, I'd definitely get some games in with you guys. See how I would love if they ever do have physical cards available. If they would want to send us some or, or sell us some or whatever, right. um, and give us maybe a rule book or how to play to sit down and do a video yeah. of the three of us. And because I love those videos of us sitting down and playing a game for the first time reading the rule book to see how easily it is to pick up yeah. from yeah. somebody. Was, yeah. I, I think those kinds of, of uh, that kind of content is important. We did, it, we, we wanted to do it with, um, the trail and house of the hill. Um, but you know, it was Easter. Everybody's busy. We no. yeah. You know, yeah. we all couldn't get out of together. So we, 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 we made do with what we had here and we played it, but we really wanted to, me and Caleb really wanted to do a video to show how easily the instructions were to follow. Oh, and, yeah. Right. And if, if, if Jesse and the, the team at Blight Breed ever want to maybe send us something to be able to, to do that for them Just to show like how easily, okay, how... look at these. Yeah. Idiots sit down and play the game for the first time with this rule book and see how we're easy it is to. Uh, <laughs> we are, you know, what I mean. we talk about all the time how we're idiots. So, but uh, yeah, I think it's. I don't know. First impression. Sure. Like, um, it's hard to give an impression just based on because, like you said, I'm a gameplay type person. Right. I I got to be able to see it. The art's cool. Um, if that's the, if that's the concept that they're going with for their cards, like, that's, like, that's easily, like, like you said, it's easy to look over. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, getting away from that cartoony depending aspect. Depending on the play style. Yeah, depending on the play style. Sure. So, you know, if it's an easy game to, like, pick up and, like, there's not too many complicated rules involved with it, which, based off of what I'm seeing from the, from what we looked at, it looks pretty similar to everything that we've played. The arena is definitely after like pokemon like sure it, yeah. it really is it, it feels to me like it's a big mixture of and, and jesse was like wow this is crazy because i talked to him about legions yeah and he's like it's crazy how you talk about it because it does seem like it has similarities yeah. but for me if i'm reading it right of what i've read it's a mixture of pokemon um legions which you didn't even really know about and kind of magic. It feels like to me it's a mesh of those well, three types of games. just me listening to it, it also sounds like a little bit of Vanguard as well. Yeah. Because it, the, like, just like our warlords in <clears throat> Legions, in Vanguard, you can only hit your Vanguard. Right. And get take damage. You can hit everybody else, but you can only No, this game damage. you don't know. This game you want, it's like Legions, you're attacking your warriors first until there's none left. Right, time. right, right, exactly. Oh, that well, that's it? like that in, Van in, in Vanguard, so, in, well, not to get off subject, but in Vanguard, you have your main Vanguard, sure. and then you have two rear guards. Mm -hmm. And those rear guards you can use to protect your Vanguard. Oh, yeah, yeah. And okay. then, or you can use cards from your hand to protect your Vanguard so you don't take your damage. I gotcha. That's what I meant by that part. And then, like, and then you're that, protecting. And then, that, since you brought up Vanguard, I, I, I've i said several times that's one of my reasons why I don't like Vanguard is the cartoony art and the super bright colors that I can't see. And, I hope that people stop using color and text because it hinders people like me. Yeah. Just yeah. use white text so or, it's black. E or black and a white background so it's just easily visible. But the Vanguard did a very poor job on that, in my opinion, because they wanted it to look bright and flashy and it just doesn't work for certain people it it does it does take a little bit i mean even without the colors it does take a little bit for vanguard to understand the soul charge the soul blast yeah. the everything like that which i'm so wondering it's understandable which i'm actually wondering if that these like adrenaline vials or whatever they are are kind of like i feel like, like they're potions the, like yeah all, like, like like boosters that's all that keeps popping into yeah. my head is they're potions yeah one's helping strength one's helping defense i guess Maybe. I, I i don't know yeah. like so okay, so you're 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 you would be okay if the mechanics and the game was yeah you, know, you I mean, could overlook some of the art things I, that you're not a fan of yeah you know like if it's if if the artwork if the artwork looks like it's from like you know Street Fighter or like Tekken like you, you prob you probably yeah. count me out yeah like if I want to see that I'll just I'll go play the video this is why I love having three people here like because it's it's three different opinions. We got a lore guy, we got an art guy, we got a gameplay mechanics guy. And that's why I like the three of us together doing these videos, because we all have different opinions of what yeah. sells on a game. Yeah. So you're saying, okay, if it's Street Fighter, Tekken looking stuff, 
I could maybe possibly be able to look at if the gameplay is just well, phenomenal. And the gameplay's got to be phenomenal, but also, like, what what are we looking at for, like, rarity cards and stuff like that? Uh, you know? So, uh, you have bronze, which is common, silver, which is uncommon, gold, which is ra rare, rainbow, which is ultra rare, and one hidden rare not yet revealed that I actually know about, but... Um, it's not yet revealed. So there's we're yeah. talking one, two, three, four, five, six different rarities. So my curiosity is what do each of the clans hold? The, yeah. yeah. That's my curiosity because Are there I, are there arm cards? Are there equipment cards? That might be yeah. the adrenaline and stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah. And this is why it's it's so hard. I, I know that it's it's like, oh man, these guys are just rambling on about this game. But I think it's important to do these kind of videos when there is no information out. Yeah. So because no gameplay, there's no, no gameplay because no we're anything. kind of given our our thoughts on it without any of that. Yeah. And it, it, it that's the stuff that kind of helps the the development team behind these games. Like, okay, this is what we need to work on, guys. We need to get a gameplay video out there. We need to maybe work on some color issues for people that are colorblind and stuff like that. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's all gonna, it's all gonna kind of like, it's really, it's really hard, and it seems jaded to like give an honest review based off of the small little bit that we have. We mm -hmm. don't have the mechanics, we don't have the gameplay, we don't even have a rule book, right? No. You know, yeah. um, anything that we could possibly, you know, be like, okay, yeah, like what's that, the turn structure? What, yeah, something. Like that. Yeah. Right now, we're just, we're just basing our opinion off of. Well, just based you know, off of what and, we do and, have. And yeah. what we do have. And, and that's why I said I think it's, I know it kind of sucks doing these kind of videos. We usually don't do these. Usually we have physical stuff in our hand. We usually have rule books. But I want to do something a little bit different on this video. Something where we didn't have any of that. To just get it, just that first glimpse of what we thought about it. I think it's a what cool. What is out there. I think it's a cool concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm I, interested. I, think, I want to see more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's piqued my interest, and now I'm intrigued, but, mm -hmm. you know, we just need... It's not like, uh, okay, but yeah. and it's whatever, and what, but what, no, what, it actually... What about you? What's what's pulling you? Like, what either is pulling you or pushing you from this game? Um, well, pulling me, of course, I do like artwork, but I'm always... Because I do like to draw that was scary sorry <laughs> do like to draw and i do like to write stories mm -hmm. and a lot of the humanoid animalistic stuff is the really interesting yeah. to me and i mean for goodness sakes i've drawn myself as a dragon with dragon wings before yeah. a thousand times over because yeah. i'm obsessed with dragons so the humanoid stuff is actually very it's pulling me in now the battle the like the the layout of the yeah. mat I don't know how I like that. It's, it's unpleasing yeah. to my eyes only because I don't know how it works yet. Yeah, I think Maybe that's... Maybe after I was the same way. Wait, looking at the... It, it, it hurts my eyes <laughs> so to look at it. Yeah, so looking at the... Uh, let's see if we bring it back up. I can't remember what number... Yeah, that... That doesn't, I will be honest, that doesn't intrigue me. I don't... Mm -mm. I'm not a fan of the layout, but... It's also because I don't know how this it plays. This game yeah. plays. Yep. Maybe the combat zone's gonna make more sense to me because we're used to when we're playing games like Magic or Legions or mm -hmm. whatever. We have yeah. our cards lined out. We have yep. okay. These are the warrior spaces. This is where our our commander warlord sits. This is where our trap card sits. It just 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 seems. A, a quick view of this seems a bit confusing to me. But also, it's because I don't know what those zones are actually for or yeah. how those cards like work. Like, we can guess, yeah. but until we actually know how the game play, and, it plays out... Well, it, and it's, it's like, like... At the end of the day, too... Oh. At the end of the day... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> pull that back up one more time. So you have the combat zone, and then is the arena, is that something different? Or? I'm supposing the, the hybrid... Thing, I think the I combat... Think is the arena. So I think your hybrid podium is where you're warriors sit and when you want to use them you pull them up to the combat zone oh that would make sense because then your clan card would probably be your Correct. clan leader right Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's what i'm assuming that would make a little bit more sense because then you're shifting it into so battle. i'm assuming maybe yeah. your opponent pulls a high uh one of the hybrids from the hybrid podium 
up to the combat zone and then you order the opponent decides yeah. well which one's going to defend or whatever and yeah. then maybe the vile reserves or whatever gives you those heightened attacks or defenses yeah. that might buff the character make it stronger than mm -hmm. what your opponent thinks it is and ends up killing mm -hmm. okay. if that's the case i could get down with that yeah I, right i could play with that i think we might have stumbled upon something here fellas. that's got to go gents but yeah i did say fellas you're like <laughs> one of the dudes man <laughs> um but uh i guess too in all honesty, and I've never, that I never cared about this, and I don't think any of us ever have cared about this until a certain game. It really, really comes down to the company. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, um, yeah. I used to never give. Hi, mommy. Sorry. A crap about a, the hi. company. Hello. <laughs> I I used to never give a crap about a company. Because most of the time, if you try to reach a company, you're talking to customer service reps or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it really comes yeah, down to Jesse and yeah. how he he is with us as consumers or as um, players of the game. Yeah. We've had a really, really good experience with Future Lore Studios. Mm -hmm. um, they hooked us up with a lot of product to review for no no reason. We're nobodies. We're we very small content creators. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, that's what matters to me. I want a game and a company that supports not just big content creators, but small content creators like us. And that's what Future Lore Studios is. That's why you and me decided to no longer cover a certain game. Mm -hmm. Is because we weren't big enough for them. Yeah. Um, to to We weren't worth their time. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to associate myself with a company like that. Um, I'm nobody is not true. You're nobody's yeah. not true. You're nobody's not true. We take a lot of time to create videos, good or bad. It doesn't matter. We do them because we have fun doing them. We yeah. love these games. We love tabletop games, TCGs, board games. That's why we do these. Um, our opinions of the day, I'm sure, probably don't matter to some of these companies. But at the end of the day, how you treat me as a consumer, as a player, matters. Yeah. Not as a content creator so much, but as a consumer and as a player. And right. that's how Future Lore Studios did us. They didn't look at us as content creators. They looked at us as fans and consumers and as players. And somebody who loves the same passion that he has created. And as, you know, like... we're, we're, we're told we're small content creators by a certain company, but we've done unbelievable things for, yeah. for other companies. Yeah. We've helped boost their product. We've helped promote their product we've and we don't want anything in return we're no. doing it because we love yeah. it yeah and that's the thing if you that's treat if you treat us right like, we're not asking if you treat for us anything. right and you give us a good product that's actually really good that we're passionate about we're gonna go far and beyond to promote it like nobody's oh, business yeah. uh, and i think we've proven that time and time again oh, yeah. so i just hope that jesse and his team and his company is is that kind of company that you know because sometimes you just get those people that want to create a game to make a quick buck, to become yeah. rich, yeah. Um, to become famous, to live that lifestyle. Um, but you have to first and foremost care about the consumer and the player. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. what really because matters. That's, that's going to make or break it. We're, yeah, we're the, ones, we're the ones that are giving you that yeah. money. So you got to make us happy and please us as well. And um, I, I just, that vibe I get from Jesse is a lot uh, like I got from Taylor, yeah. to be honest. He just yeah. seemed like a really down to earth guy. And um, was very informative when I asked him questions and stuff like that. And unfortunately, some of it I can't share because it's you know it's a little right, right. hush hush, it's, and it's I get still it. In it's just still yeah. in, it's still yeah. in development stuff. So um, I I would definitely be down to to um, to back this game. I'd definitely be down to play it. Um, like I said, I wish we had physical stuff to be able to play some games to show how the gameplay is. And maybe in the future we'll get something like that. Well, even like a graph that. or something yeah. would be fine. A rule book would be like, great. A I, rule I, book, yeah. Because yeah. I can sit here and I'll read, read a rule book all day yeah. and figure out how to play so that when the game does have, have physical that, form copies that mm -hmm. I'm ahead of the game. I yeah. know how to play. So mm -hmm. That's it, guys. I mean, I know it was, uh, I know it was hard doing these kind of videos, but we just kind of want to give our first view our opinions of our view on Blightbreed without knowing much about the game. I mean, there's a lot of people, I've watched a lot of content creators talk about this game and they had way less things to say because they're like, I just don't know much about it. Um, but I try to do as much research as I could 
um, with what information I got. So no, just based on that, I'm interested. I want to yeah. see more. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. not one of these. That I'm just going to brush under the thing. I'm yeah, in, I'm interested. Yeah, yeah no, I like I said, I'll post the links to their uh, Instagram and their older Kickstarter. They had. Uh, and it's still up so you can see some more visual art stuff and and what the booster packs contain and then I'm sure if you have any questions Jesse um, is on Instagram and I'll put a, I'll put a link to their discord in there if you guys okay. want to join the discord I and check it Instagram, out and whatever. So. <laughs> yeah uh, you have discord so yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll put all those links in there and uh, when the video uh, uploads on YouTube and we'll go from there but um, I'm, I'm excited to check it out I yeah. really yeah. am uh, I just I'm a physical Physical form kind of guy. When is their when's their tentative release? Uh, don't know. Um, okay. uh, I don't know. He didn't want to divulge that because I'm sure with creating trading card games right now, with the way uh, it is getting product and everything like that, it's probably very difficult difficult to give a yeah. certain timeline. I do believe, if I recall, um, a Kickstarter should be up in the next couple months, and I I believe he said he was gonna try to have a website done by the end of. May, so maybe when that stuff pops up, maybe there'll be some stuff, product on there, physical form stuff, maybe that we can purchase to maybe do some more videos to cover the game right. and actually do a gameplay of it to see how we like it. Be we'll, yeah. we'll pull out a table, we'll get some cameras up, and we'll do a gameplay and just kind of do a walkthrough right. if, if we have that opportunity. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited to check it out. It's definitely blows the next game out of the water. Let me tell you, I just I can't. I'm scared now. I can't even. I, I, I can't even understand how a game like this was just given any kind of thumbs up. But you guys are gonna like. It might be the shortest content video I'm we've ever done. It could be now. like two minutes. And be like, we don't even have to do this anymore. This is garbage. You know, so, but Blightbury didn't get that. We've we've been here about 50 minutes talking about it. So, um, it definitely is obviously. I'm caught really our eye in the foxes. And, and, and stuff like that. So, I, or we would sit here and talk about it for 50 minutes. So. Yeah. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it brings, and I'll keep in touch with Jess, Jesse and see if maybe he will, wants to hook us up with something later on in the future to to do more content, and some gameplay on it. So, yeah. and thank you, Jesse, for letting us do this. And I do have a message from Jesse. Uh, he said, "Just please support the game by following their Instagram, Discord for uh, for more information and upcoming information." Blight Breed's been a story of his for years, and he finally got to develop into TCG, and he's constantly working on it. He's extremely passionate about the game, and any support from the people that can help levitate the game to new heights is very uh, welcomed and thanked. So, uh, right there, you know, you get that you get that vibe from the guy, like you know, like this is this is his baby. Yeah, this he is, actually it, just wants people to yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, which yeah. we've covered some other games that weren't so much like that, but. Yep. Uh, we'll see where Blight Breed goes. Um, maybe once a website pops up, we'll come back and, and talk about it a little bit more. Uh, but until then, we'll just keep moving on with some other new TCGs. And then, of course, um, June, we have a video popping up for Legions. And then July, we have some more videos we're going to be doing for them as well for their expansion release. So oh, yeah. let's see where Blight, Blight Breed goes. So, um, guys, uh, if you watch the video, if you just decided we were boring and didn't want to watch it, I get it. Uh, we're not the most entertaining people sometimes when we're trying to figure out something on a game. Uh, but um, I will put the links to their Discord, their um, Instagram, and their uh, old Kickstarter so you can check out some uh, of the other cards that we weren't able to show on here because I don't have the, the um, rights to them. So check them out. As always, we appreciate you guys showing up. And as we always say at the end of, end of our videos, when life has you down, pick up that D20 and roll for initiative. Until then, see you guys later.